All right, so I've gotten a, a question about how to burn, how to download a file, an audio file, and burn it to a, a CD so that you can play it back in your car or on any other CD player. Uh, this is different than playing it back on your PC, which you can do directly from a website or uh, through a variety of different players on your uh, PC. Uh, burning it to a CD for a uh, play in a CD player is a different file format, so uh, let's walk through how to do that. I'm going to use the uh, Sermon Audio site, but you can do this from uh, any site that allows you to download an audio file. Uh, generally going to be an MP3 is what I would recommend you downloading if they give you a choice. So uh, let's walk through that here. So I'm at the uh, Calcinon Presbyterian Church, uh, my particular church, and uh, let's uh, pick something we want to download. So let's say uh, recently had a, a great uh, series uh, on Providence and History. You see Sermon Audio uh, shows me the whole series, one through 18 different uh, uh, lectures that were given. Uh, so let's just start with number one. We've got the, uh, the Doctrine of History, uh, Providence and History. Uh, you can see they've got a handy little download icon uh, for this uh, particular file. So we're going to go ahead and click on Download. And it pops up and says, okay, well, here's the file. Here's the file name. I'm going to edit this down because I really don't need this big, long, meaningless sermon audio number. And I'm not really that concerned about the date on the file name, so I'm just going to shorten it down there. And uh, now I'm going to choose where I want to store this. Uh, in this case, my uh, PC came up and offered to uh, download this to my documents area, but uh, since I kind of want to group these together, I'm going to uh, go to my desktop and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call that Providence Oops. and History Modules. You can see it's actually going to put this folder up here on my uh, desktop. And open that if you want to keep an eye on what's going on in that folder in the meantime. So I go in here. This is the file name that's going to be saved and I hit Save. My browser pops up and says, okay, I'm downloading the file. And as soon as it starts flashing in Chrome browser anyway, your uh, browser uh, user interface may be different in how it shows you the downloads. But I can see very quickly here that the file has finished downloading. And indeed, there it is uh, in the folder that I chose to put it in. Uh, let's get another one here. Let's get the second uh, one. I'm not going to bother with doing all 18 for uh, time's sake. Uh, you can see in this case that uh, Windows remembered where I was uh, last downloading to, so it went ahead and uh, brought me right up into my Providence and History folder. I renamed this one, taking out some of the meaningless numbers, and I hit Save, and again, now I've got the second file downloading. This one's a little bit longer, so we'll go ahead and let that download. Uh, you can obviously repeat this process for all 18 uh, of the series. And you can see that the files are really pretty small. So this is an 18 meg. Uh, the first one's an 18 meg file. The second one's going to be probably a little longer. Yeah, it's 27. Uh, these are small. The nice thing about MP3 files is that they are small. So they take up very little hard drive space or storage for uh, playing uh, the mp3 file format and indeed I can go ahead right here and click on the file uh, and it will launch into Turn with the, me, if you will, the Colossians chapter uh, one Windows Media Player and start playing so that's great so you've downloaded it you can play it right from your hard drive uh, as you wish but let's move on and see how do I burn this then to uh, an audio CD so uh, I'm going to go ahead and insert a CD into my PC now so with the click, I just closed the drive uh, door with the CD inserted. Uh, Windows will nicely recognize, hey, that is a uh, recordable uh, CD, and it's going to pop up here in a second and offer me some options as to what I can do with this writable. Uh, it just means that I can write data to it, uh, but it's going to offer me what some choices as to what I can do with this CD. All right, so the uh, Windows has popped up, and it is offering me a few choices here. Burn an audio CD using the Windows Media Player. 
burn files to disk or create a CD using iTunes. Uh, I'm not going to presume that you have iTunes, so we're going to use the Windows Media Player. Uh, we're going to choose Burn an Audio CD. So this is going to burn it into a format, uh, a file format onto your CD so that you can then take the CD to your car or any other CD player and pop it in and it will recognize it and be ready to go. That's different than burning files to disk, which is going to copy, basically make a copy of the MP3 file and put it on the disk, which is great if you want to uh, burn the files onto a CD and then carry that CD to another PC or another player that can play MP3 files. If you know that your car stereo supports MP3 files, then this is a great way to do it because you can get many more uh, MP3 files onto a disk, uh, which generally is going to be some, will store somewhere between 70 uh, and 80 megs of files. Uh, so as you can see in these MP3 files, we've got 18 uh, meg file here and a 27, almost 28 meg file here. So both of these would fit onto a CD if I burn it as files to a disk, uh, but they won't both fit onto uh, an audio CD. So we're going to have to burn basically one file per CD, which isn't very efficient, but if you want to play it in your car, uh, those are the constraints of an audio CD. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, choose to burn an audio CD so we can pop this into our car. And this will launch Windows Media Player, as you see here. It shows that I've got the CD drive, it's an audio CD, and I've got uh, basically 80 minutes uh, available for uh, storing onto this disk. So we're going to, as you can see here, it says drag items here to create a burn list. So the easiest way to do that is go over here, grab the first file, left click and hold, drag it. You can see it pops up here, it says add to burn list, so I'm going to do that. And it comes up here and says, hey, great, here's the uh, name of the file. It's 38 minutes, so uh, that uh, fits within the 80 minute limit of the disk. And now I simply hit the uh, Start Burn button, and it will burn it to the CD. This is going to take a few minutes. Well, maybe not. Let's see. I may edit some of this out, so uh, we'll see how long it takes. But generally, not too, not too long. You can watch the status up here. It was preparing. Now it's writing to disk. This is the part that will take a little while, and I will uh, skip a bit at this point uh, in the video to uh, the part where it has already finished writing to the disk. All right, so we're getting down to the end here. You can see that the uh, writing to disk is at 100%. The burning is at 99% completed. We want to wait until that says it's completely done. There's a couple different phases here. That's why there's a difference between the writing to disk saying 100% and the burning saying 99% completed. All right, it's done. I don't know if you heard that little click, but the CD uh, being completed uh, has been popped, ejected from my PC, and I can grab that disc now, take it to my car, and plop it into the car player, and it will take off and play just like any other CD you bought from the store. Uh, you can repeat this process with each uh, file and create yourself uh, an entire series on the Providence uh, and the history module or any other uh, file you want to download and indeed any mp3 file on your PC or that you download from the internet uh, you can perform this same process and uh, create uh, CDs you can then play in uh, your car CD player or any CD player. Hope this has been of help. Thanks for stopping by ProTech Coach. Have a great day.